everyone in this team not one of them wanted to be pastors in this place i think i was a backbencher i was way at the back and i was i was actually hiding here when i came pastor looked at me and said what is romans 10 was 1 and 2 i don't know <laughs> saturday night i'll be taking water in a bucket walking up the stairs throwing it into the road come back you know so with one bucket i would dry the whole place by about 6 7 in the morning he keeps repeating this one thing i don't mind going back to those basement days i don't mind going back to starting it all from zero i'm not an emotional guy uh Praise the Lord. Welcome to what could be the last episode of Daily Devotions in this series. We may have daily devotions going on as weekly or nightly devotions just waiting on the Lord. But I want to say thank you. Uh we want to say thank you from the pastoral team, from all of us uh who were making this happen uh the four plus uh, cameramen the ones who are involved in uh, setting up the place just want to say thank you on behalf of everyone uh, for being there uh, and and I'm so happy that you are blessed the kind of stories i hear about how people were blessed uh, just feel it was all worth it but otherwise i thought since i don't feel that inspiration as in i don't feel the lord saying continue so i thought though the viewership is very high i thought we'll call you know tentative time pass time out and then maybe regroup after some time uh with some other plan that god puts in our hearts so so this is the last uh, episode in this series and uh, uh this place is very special this place is very special because this is where the english service actually began well if you talk about documentation no it started it uh one floor above that is on the ground floor right now we are 3 meters below the ground we are in a place called ganga nagar this place was called ganga nagar because the people here believe that ganga flows beneath this place that's because you find water table very high here so uh, in this property bethel ajay church used to be for about now it's been here for about 50 60 years and uh, since we could not buy neighboring properties they decided to go vertical up and down so the church committee then built this about 3 4 meters under the ground about 10 feet to 12 feet under the ground so english service didn't have space and so the committee at that time told saying you can go and use that basement hall which had no flooring no uh, plastering on the walls no electricity um no fresh air but uh, a few of us young people we just took the call of god uh, very seriously and so we decided okay if god could uh, bless and uh, prosper joseph from a pit uh, why god of genesis is not grown old he is still the same yesterday today and forever so we decided to jump in here and uh, here we used to put about 183 chairs and uh, the first service got packed out then the second service started so it's here actually we started having multiple services and our uh, teams began like our worship team actually as a choir was formed here our greeters the team was formed here our volunteers team was formed here so this is in in many ways the genesis uh, this hall is really the place where the genesis of bethel ag english what we call international worship center really began here now of course this place is used for our canada church and something fantastic is going on here that god is using pastor chamraj so i requested uh, I, it was really the pastoral team you know they have all these memories of the past so they said let's do our last episode from ganga nagar where the english service sort of actually began so i was so excited i'm so glad my wife is here uh, because those days i was unmarried i was 21 my goodness one of our cameramen is 21 so 
Uh, yeah, it was fun those days to have no girlfriends but only friends in the Lord. And uh, uh, to to start off at that age in ministry was definitely. Today when I look back, I think we were a set of crazy guys and girls whose only ambition was to honor the Lord Jesus. And it's our prayer that that will still remain our only ambition to honor the Lord. And He's brought us 23 years ago to today. It's just God's faithfulness. So I guess it was a long introduction. So we're going to pray and seek the Lord. I'm going to request one or two of us pastors to pray because this is very special. This is very unique. So maybe at least two pastors will pray and then we will begin today's daily devotion, probably the last in this series. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to your presence, O oh God, this wonderful day. Thank you, Father God, for this great opportunity that you Thank gave you, us, O oh God, Thank you, to come to your glorious presence and to see the goodness of what you have done in the last 20, 23 years of, I mean, this wonderful church. Lord, we thank you so much, Father God. Lord, your word says that your beginning might be small, but your end is going to be greater. And Lord, thank you, Lord, that your word says that you are a God who will never despise the humble beginnings. Thank you so much, Lord, that you honored your work in our lives, Father God. Thank Thank you so much that you trusted us with your kingdom yes, work. and we pray in the coming days and years oh god help us father god to fulfill your purpose in yes, our master. lifetime and we pray oh god that we would be people who will leave a legacy father god for our Hallelujah. generations yes. to come yes, we thank you the lord that you're a gracious god bless this time of yes, um, in worship and the meditation oh god in jesus name we pray amen. Amen. amen dear lord we come before your presence once again and we thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness oh god yes. lord especially in the past two months, two and a half months, oh God, Lord. God, you have been so good to us. And Lord, you strengthened us, oh God, to do this daily devotions. We thank you for the thousands of lives which have been blessed each day, oh God, Father, Lord. And we thank you for carrying us through, oh God, Lord, through this season, oh God, Lord. Especially today, Lord, our hearts are so humbled to come, Lord, to this place, oh God, Father, Lord, where it all began, oh God, Father, to hear about, Lord, the, 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 the stories, oh God, Lord, of of your faithfulness, how you, Lord, uh, use the little, O oh God, Father, Lord, and the children, your children, which who are faithful in the little, O oh God, Lord, today, Lord, you have entrusted much, Lord, because, O oh God, you are faithful, you are good, O oh God, Father, Lord, and we pray in the coming days, O oh God, Lord, as a church, you will help us to do, Lord, great things for you, O oh God, Father, yes. for your glory. Once again, we thank you, and we commit this this day into your mighty hands, O oh God, Lord. we commit this devotional into your mighty hands. Bless us today once again, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Wow, beautiful day it is and what a beautiful uh, place to be in where it all began. And we want to give glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we love you, we praise you and adore you. Glorify thy name in all the earth. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name. We praise you and 
Psalms 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose heart are set on a pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of spring. The autumn rains also cover it with pool. They go from strength to strength, till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Amen. Wow, this place is so emotional because... This is where we really learned uh, God's goodness and God's grace. You know, uh, one of the cameras, can you point towards that uh, cemented portion? You know, that cemented portion I did with my hand. I learned masonry work here because none of these things were done. So me and one of my friends, uh, he is also a pastor. So we both started off in the night and uh, it took us two, three days. And then, of course, somebody gave me one 50 rupees. Uh, so I took that 50 rupees and gave it to one, one fellow who was walking on the road. I asked him, do you know how to do masonry work? He said, yes. So I gave him that 50 rupees and made him also work. And that is how we got this place completed. Otherwise, every Saturday night, I'll come here with a bucket, a broom and a cup, like a mug. And... Take all, the, there'll be about two to three inches of standing water, minimum. And during rainy season, it would sometimes be about five, six inches of water. So I don't know how many liters. So Saturday night, I'll be taking water in a bucket, walking up the stairs, throwing it into the road, come back, you know. So with one bucket, I would dry the whole place by about six, seven in the morning. And I had an inhaler in my pocket. So every half an hour, one hour, I have to take an inhaler, take a small break and uh, continue to do this. Of course, after a few weeks, brothers in the church began to join me and I wouldn't do it alone. Uh, people began to come along and support. And um, But you know, those days, one of the greatest joy, even today, the greatest joy is that you get a chance to do something for God, you know. I mean, 
obviously uh, you you don't want to work hard i mean who wants to work hard all of us want shortcuts but when it comes to working for god there was this excitement that getting a chance to do something for jesus our lord and um, i just pray and i hope that that attitude will not change and that mood will not change you know so uh, some of us seated here come from that old school uh, of thinking which is actually the right school or good school of thinking so i'm going to surprise uh, at least three of them with some questions i'm going to start with pastor danny because pastor danny is the spontaneous one in the team you know he comes up with ideas and gives work to everyone else i mean obviously he also works along but uh, i'm going to ask him some questions and then i'm going to ask the other two also questions how how old were you pastor jenny when you uh, first came here 14 years of age he was 14 years of age at that time uh, when he came to this church but i'll go to him a little later i'm going to give the mic to pastor danny and i'm going to ask him to share one or two significant thoughts from his memories uh, about because really this is where the team gelled together and you know it's been 20 plus years we still hold on uh, god's grace not that any of us are not wrong or or always right it's just that we all realize you know we are all working with each other and we need god's grace to move on and that friendship has stuck on and it's it's not just the six of us or seven of us really it's uh, at least a 100 plus people uh, who are tightly knit together from the basement days now all of them may not be together all the time but but yet uh, that core group of maybe 20 30 people still remains strong uh, especially spiritually strong and that's the great thing about it so uh, over to you pastor danny whatever comes to your heart in this place i think i was a backbencher i was way at the back and i was i was actually hiding here when i came Uh, because this was basement this is a place to hide so uh, i i i will i still remember my i exact place where i sat i still remember it's all the way at the back and i remember my neighbor also it was uh, brother matthew mm-hmm. and thomas uh, but later i figured out they were my distant cousins also <laughs> that is over a period of time i figured out they were cousins uh, but uh, you know it all happened the strongest memory that i have is i could uh, feel the god's presence over here that was something uh, that uh, hooked on that i that i really hooked on to that is god's presence in this place and the second thing that i uh, i experienced was a belonging i somehow deep within my heart i knew uh, you know i belong in this place this was not a, a you know a, a mega church this was not something great i can still feel the damp smell uh, of cement it was not plastered and all that like this uh, i could feel the stuffiness here i can the memories of smell is also registered in my mind so uh, i i remember all that with all that uh, i i felt god's presence god's touch uh, a belonging and i and i and i knew i belong in this church and it's because of this basement i didn't even leave bangalore because of this church i didn't even leave bangalore i decided to continue to be in bangalore do my other courses and uh, you know hang on here in bangalore because somehow i knew god has some purpose in and through this church uh, being a part of this church very strong memories i think there are more i think i forgot the rest i think these are the few things that came to my mind <laughs> so pastor danny's uh... Uh, sisters are all in the west you know and uh, if i remember right uh, he was also scheduled to go to the west to the united states and he said no who wants to go to us i see god's purpose in my life and and that time there was no plan for him to be a pastor he just wanted to be a member in bethel ag church and uh, didn't want to go to us because then he would miss being in bethel ag and I, and i and i know there are many people like that in our church today who have who have actually g- given up their citizenship in america they've given up their green card or whatever in uk and other countries and have settled in bangalore they're not even a prayer group coach or anything they just want to be in bethel ag so they have you know it's so encouraging when i when i think of all that it is emotional it is difficult not to think of how how it is true that actually god is in charge of things you know you can't attract a person to a basement hall you really can't it has to be god 
and so and i have always believed this jesus said i will build my church if we all can just get out of the way god can do a great job uh, we just need to be co-laborers with christ jesus and not interfere with what god is doing so <clears throat> i'm going to go to pastor pastor uh, justin at the last pastor jenny i'm going to ask you 14 year old boy you were like john the apostle i think you were the youngest in the group at that time and uh, uh, i'm sure he felt as the unwanted in the group many times maybe that is a wrong word he probably didn't feel unwanted in the group but he must have felt uh, unwanted per se because he was not very active in his initial years and then he picked up guitar and he became a very active part of uh, the bethel lady church strange unusual our god's way so i'm going to give the mic to him uh sorry just uh this place was a place for the first time in my life i felt like living of thinking of living another day because i've never wanted to live one more day in my life but after coming here to this church being here as pastor said i actually felt all the the whole team pastor the entire team that was their worship team and all of them they were like brothers and i was just like a small kid who was trying to understand you know what life means and uh, this is this place where and during the morning prayers there was a kid i didn't know much about you know how to pray or thing but i used to come along with my sister and i started watching all of them how they pray the passion that they had and they used to do prayer walks everything was you know they, they were passionate about you know seeing something happen you know that our city should be saved our nation should should be safe so at the age of 14 at that time at though at that age maybe today 10 year olds and 12 year olds can you know relate much better than when i was 14 that time i never understood why you know our people praying like this you know why why so much of passion and i remember in this hall especially uh pastor used to conduct something a meeting called as power time so power time was a time where pastor used to teach the bible it was a mid week it was on a wednesday or a friday if i'm not wrong wednesday evening or friday so he gave us a homework the previous week saying next week uh, by heart the scripture romans 12 verses 1 and 2 so the next week we all came in here and uh, the team the core team uh the leadership team and uh, all of them were there so we all had notebooks we used to take down whatever pastor used to teach us so the first question he asked is what is romans 12 verses 1 and 2 and everybody put their heads down because nobody wanted to answer they all forgot so i was the only one who put the head up so pastor looked at me and said what is romans 12 verses 1 and 2 i didn't know <laughs> and everybody else says keep you don't know okay next week write it 15 times and you come <laughs> i felt bad i said why only me nobody else <laughs> only me i went back home and i started writing i bought a new notebook pastor told me buy a new notebook write every scripture and as you write you know keep reading what the scripture means romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 so i started writing i was feeling bad and i told my sister i remember this very well i told why only me why pastor told only me why nobody else why should i write 15 times my sister told me something interesting maybe god will speak to you as you write so you just tell god to speak to you so i said okay i will write in that attitude that god so i started writing romans 12 verse 1 2 and by the fifth or sixth time i remember a small voice speaking to me that i have a great purpose for your life in this place you know i remember that very strong that is one voice in my entire life that i remember that god spoke to me and today i know that scripture by heart <laughs> Romans 12:1 verses 2 Therefore I urge you brothers in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as living sacrifice holy and pleasing to God this is your spiritual act of worship do not be conformed by the patterns of this world but be transformed by renewing your mind then you will be able to approve what is God's will is good pleasing and perfect 
My life began to build from that point and I really want to thank everyone that put everything in my life to where I am today. Thank you. So so today after this morning prayer we are all going to Ganga Bakery. <laughs> Nostalgia. Ganga Bakery is about 100 meters from here. So we used to have multiple services here and these guys you know they get tired and uh, especially uh, those who are on the stage like Pastor Justin uh, and the musicians and choir so they all same gang those days these days same gang now we have more additions the latest one is Pastor Krishanu I'm going to ask him to pray at the end but uh, they used to go to Ganga Bakery and uh, have a tea or coffee and again come back by the time I'll be preaching in the next service and by the time uh, they have to sing they'll be back here so uh, those were those beautiful days where the lord taught us that when you actually work for god you sweat it out and give your best to the lord you know you don't look for comfort your joy is in the fact that you're honoring the name above every other name and i'm thinking of your sister pastor jinni i'm thinking of sister jinsi what a lovely lovely a fantastic volunteer she's been in this church wherever you are love you god bless you and to your beautiful family and uh, so nice that she's still in you know along with her work she's in ministry i mean all the people who left from here they carry that flame in their heart which god put you know pastor danny never knew he's going to be a pastor here actually everyone in this team not one of them wanted to be pastors so none of them especially pastor justin and danny uh, i told them you have to leave your job and come full time and uh, of course they prayed and they heard from god obviously that part is there but um, even the others they were not looking for pastoral ministry in the church they just wanted to serve the lord because they felt god's call uh, including my wife nobody wanted to be pastors and no one wanted to preach or anything uh, it was all about to to do whatever god's calling us to do and to be a blessing in people's life without expecting anything in return and i'm happy that those foundations have been changed i'm glad that those things still remain irrespective of whatever our size may have been much bigger compared to where we were but those things don't matter what matters is our heart before god and so i'm so thankful while i'm talking i think of so many people but i won't bore you guys too long you have your day to catch up with so i'll i'm, I'm going to ask pastor justin to reflect on a few memories that uh, uh whatever he wants to share well uh it's um it's going to be 30 years of <laughs> being a part of this church uh uh that i'll have to speak in two or three minutes i hope i can do that um i uh rather met pastor when he was 14 15 and i was 12 or something <laughs> like that and uh, uh there's always been something different about pastor i mean uh, i haven't uh told this or i mean we don't brag about each other but then um i remember who ever said this uh, um was it charles finney who said i burned with the fire of god and okay one of, one of them yeah one of them who said i burned with the fire of god and people come to see the fire of god burning in me and i believe that's the same about pastor right from a small age i mean if you uh if you would see or if you would ask people that would listen to him you know people would uh it's the same even today i mean that's why you're watching us right yeah you know uh, people would stand there or people would sit while he's preaching with their literally their mouths open <laughs> and uh, listen to every word that he speaks especially the linguistic groups when he used to i mean they used to absorb everything that he would uh, bring out of god's word and that's that's where you know uh, i saw him um and later on when god uh called him to uh take responsibility of the english service 
I mean, you've heard the stories of how the first Sunday he had nobody, there was nobody in the church, but then how he was passionate. That's one thing about Pastor. Um, he was passionate. Um, he was a man of vision. He knew what what was God's call on his life, and uh, he was he was willing to do it. You know, even after uh, you know, it's been like after five years of the church, after ten years of the church, and even off late, you know, uh, he keeps repeating this one thing: I don't mind going back to those basement days. I don't mind going back to starting it all from zero. You know, uh, because he knows that uh, God is the one that put it together. And uh, I'm not an emotional guy, uh, but then yeah, just uh, God's faithfulness, fish. So God's vision is something that He held on to, and uh, like we all know, uh, He was passionate, and He is still. He is still. When it comes to God, um, and when He's sure about something, what God has spoken. Um, I mean, he just goes for it. He just bulldozes everything, and um, he just goes for it because he knows God is with him. And um, I mean, I mean, this last twenty-five years of the English service or twenty-four years of the English service, we can everything that uh, that that we see come through is is God's faithfulness, uh, His passion um, of serving God, and uh, and so it's been a beautiful journey with Him. Um, uh, you know, uh, standing along. The best thing to do when you are standing along with a man of God is to uh, just follow God's call on his life, uh, follow God's wish, uh, vision. You know, and and support. You know, just just be the support that uh, you need to be when you uh, are with a man of God. Uh, you know, uh, so. Just, just be that. Be faithful. I mean, the beautiful thing that we as a team follow is faithful, fast, faithful, accountable, submissive, teachable. Be that, you know. And uh, God will build your life. God will bless your life. You know. Today, uh, you know, uh, some of you are seeing only the today, but we've seen the uh, journey towards today. Some of you uh, uh, may be talking about. The big church and the big, you know, worship on wheels and uh, like, you know, Pastor Danny and a couple of us were talking the other day. It took 25 years, 24 years for us to come there. You know, uh, it, it's it's not a one day's journey. So being faithful, being accountable, being submissive, being teachable uh, is a beautiful thing. And the team that is with the church, with the pastor, you know, is a beautiful team. Uh, we we love to work with this vision. Sometimes it is difficult, but then we trust it is God's call, and uh, you know we we uh, we we give our uh, everything to it, and the results is what you and I see. So uh, it's a beautiful journey, and the fellowship, like Pastor was talking about, you know, going to Ganga Bakery, and uh, uh, you know, uh, it's it's been a beautiful. Uh, it's been a beautiful fellowship together, and I, at this time, I, I, you know, I want to, uh, you know, bring out the uh, uh, one uh, secret probably about the team is there is something called as a gang, you know. <laughs> I mean, I love you guys. I mean, some of them are here. I mean, hats off to you guys, all of you, the gang. You know, don't edit it. Uh, just put it raw. <laughs> love you guys. I mean, all of us. I mean, without you, and of course, without. God, we wouldn't have uh, come so far, and we have a long journey to go. We have a long journey to go, and I believe uh, God will be with us. <laughs> you know, it's it's just God. I mean, I could keep talking. I could keep talking. I'm not a guy who talks, but then sometimes when I go, I I, I could go talking. Uh, we started with nothing, right here. Uh, and uh, you know to see, you know who were the first uh, musicians that the church had? Uh, it was a band of doctors, you know, Sadeep, Sam, wherever you guys are. I mean, I mean, all the Ambedkar gang. God bless you guys. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're watching. Um, 
you know it's all your work your foundation that you laid you know i still remember i was uh, maybe 1920s and these guys were in the you know doctors and you know they used to be scared of me <laughs> i don't know why you know uh, they used to be they used to be scared of me and uh, they used to write, write leave letters sorry you know what were the leave letters that you that they, i mean you know what was the letters that they used to pass sorry i am not able to play for this week because i did not pray one hour every day that's where we began that's where we told again of course god's favor but then the guys were committed tomorrow monday there will be exam but they will come make sure they will worship the lord together as a band and it's been the same even today you know so uh uh yeah it's been a long journey and i believe god is with us as we uh, look forward for greater things uh that are yet to come and greater things still to be done god bless feels like we are sitting in some funeral meeting but it's not is actually a celebration it's just is is just that our eyes are moist with thanks to god <clears throat> it's yes it is emotional because honestly i never thought i'll come so far i really never thought because whatever they said i'll tell you i am not such a good guy i know myself really these guys are fantastic if any pastor who for some reason you're watching this from whatever church around the world your biggest success in ministry apart from sovereignty of god and god's call and that part your biggest success is finding guys who are better than you don't find guys like you always find guys who are better than you all right at least in my life that's what worked what worked is i i managed somewhere in god's favor and mercy to get people who are more genuine than me who are more committed than me who are more holy than me at least to what i know you know and they all uh, have that that genuineness in their passion for god and i think many times i feel god's going to bless the sunday service even if i didn't pray enough they would have prayed i know for sure you know so that kind of thing is so important well i guess today's uh, program being the last one uh, uh, has gone a little longer than what we planned but yes it is emotionally charging thank you so much for being a part of the journey i hope this in some ways will inspire you not to be a uh, fooled by your smallness today don't allow your littleness today to deceive you because god's plans are always big you know that scripture in the book of job though your beginnings may be small your latter days shall be great so don't ever forget that you know don't i think it's in the book of ecclesiastic it says don't look down on the days of your beginning uh, never do that always honor that so every time i come here i get a chance my parents live uh, in the church parsonage here so every time i get a chance to come this side i always have this palpitation i always have this uh, thing going on inside that you know really uh, and i'll tell you one more thing today okay days are coming where we will not only we will not only build a big churches we are going to not only hire cricket stadiums we are going to buy them out for the church the largest gatherings in the nation will be the house of god coming to worship god if i sound like a madman it's because you don't have the faith to hear what i'm saying now if you know who your god is boy your god is much bigger than what you and i think he is able to do it he's a big god hallelujah the problem with christianity is we've got too many people who are average minded we need to be god conscious the god you and i serve is big so that's the last word in romans chapter 8 that he has foreknown us predestined us he has called us he has justified us and he has glorified us god did not call you and me to be insulted on the earth he called you and me to be glorified for his glorious name hallelujah even a ordinary person on the earth like a person from the corporation of the city maybe a sweeper maybe running a beauty salon maybe uh, they are you know having a small dhaba by the road side even they want their children when it comes to their children oh they want them to study in good schools they want them to have good education they want them to you know uh, become 
great people if ordinary people can have good vision for their children what do you think about god ha huh? god has got great dreams for his children and you and i his children he dreams big for us and the bible says past tense glorified us in other words the provision for us to be glorified is already made it's just that we have to tap into that as you can see i'm in no mood to preach i'm just in a mood to give thanks to god but i think it's been quite some time after we started today's daily devotion so we'll pray and close god wants your life to be glorified he's made the provision for that and that glorifying is not something that will happen after you die it's something that will happen while you're alive on the earth okay so don't wait to die and then be glorified in christ jesus and all no that you can do later anyway now you have to expect a glorious life not a insulted life amen so i'm going to ask uh, uh pastor deepak and pa- i know pastor deepak already prayed but i'm going to ask pastor deepak and pastor krishanu and pastor cynthia to just offer a uh, small words of prayer to the lord saying lord thank you for bringing us uh, as a team as a church to where we are and all the viewers to where we are today in christ and maybe some of you are going through some struggles and in this closing edition of daily devotions we just want you to know none of us started big none of us had it going we if i sit down here and and each one of us are going to list out the problems we went through <clears throat> not only as a church but even individual lives what problems they faced <laughs> you will be shocked because all of us have our own struggles that we had to face we all had our demons and monsters to fight but the god who gave david victory over goliath is the god who works in all of us david had a stone you may have a song you may have a word like pastor jenny was saying he had that uh, romans i am so sorry i never told you sorry for that so i'm glad god used it those day if you came to me those days oh, 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 you would be a saint by today man that was a rock cut of johnson my wife sometimes tells me she used to be scared of me those days <laughs> she said something that you shouldn't know but <laughs> but yeah but good old days <laughs> ours was an arranged marriage so so when we got married we really got into a surprise uh, most of it was pleasant some of it was unpleasant but then after a few years really god made our family life heavenly and we thank god for that Pastor Krishnanu I'm going to ask you to start with a prayer and uh, then Pastor Deepak and then if you could pray and close just short words of prayer briefly thanking God for the last I don't know 23 24 years 20 24 maybe no 24 somewhere yeah somewhere about that number so um 23 years 20 somewhere about that so we are going to pray Let's look to Lord in prayer. Master, what a story of your faithfulness, Lord. A journey that is with you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, you have shown us time and time again that if we are willing to open our hearts, you are willing to write our destinies, Lord Jesus, according to the plans that you have, your magnificent plans, Lord Jesus. Father, we see around us stories that are being built lord testimonies that are being established epistles that are being written lord and we thank you jesus for it is only you lord your faithfulness over the past 24 years lord jesus leading your children in fact your word says that even before any of these any of us were born you had already planned great things for us lord jesus even before our parents thought of us you have already destined us lord to achieve great things for your name lord if we are willing to open lord and lord even as as we stand lord father we are encouraging your people that they will trust in you and achieve greater things than we have accomplished lord thank you master for jesus that is your promise that you have said greater 
things than these will be accomplished, Lord, if we are willing to open our hearts and let you in and help us achieve, Lord, and help us be aligned, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Master, for this time of faithfulness, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that your people will always be the head and not the tail and that they will experience your supernatural blessings, Lord. And every nation, every knee will bow because you have proclaimed us as lighthouses, Lord, that will preach your gospel, that will declare your word and that your name will be glorified. Thank you, Master, for this privilege and opportunity to know your works, Lord Jesus. Let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' most mighty and matchless name we pray. Amen. Oh Lord, how can we thank you enough, oh God, Lord, for all that you have been to us, for all, all that you have done for us as individuals, as church, oh God, Lord, and as a larger global family, oh God, Lord, all those who are watching us, oh God, Father, Lord, we know that we are part of your family, oh God, Father. All that we ask today, O God, Lord, as Romans 12, verse 2 says, O God, help us to lay down our life as living sacrifice, O God, Father, Lord, and help us to continue to serve you, O God, Father, Lord. And we pray that, Lord, you will continue to fulfill your plans and purposes in and through our lives, O God, Lord, and that, Lord, you will bless your people, O God, Father, today once again and the days ahead and the weeks ahead and the years ahead, O God, Lord, that each one of them, O Lord, will prosper, O God, Lord, in their spirit, mind, soul, body, O God, Father, Lord. Once again, we thank you for you are faithful, you have always been faithful, and we trust you, O God, with all our heart with all our lives, O God, Father. We want to give you glory, Lord. Let our lives be for your glory and glory alone, O God, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to your presence, O God, once again. Thank you so much, Father God, for this amazing time of being in your presence. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, O God. Thank you, Lord, for the beautiful beginnings that you gave for this wonderful church. Lord, thank you that you are a God who will perfect everything that you have begun with us. We thank you for the greater days that are ahead of us, O God. In Jesus' name, we worship you, Father God. Lord, at this time, thank you so much, Father God, in this last two, three months of the blessed time of devotions that we had. Thank you, Lord, for the, the miracle the testimonies, the salvation, the transformation, O God, that you have done in the, in the lives of people. Lord, thank you so much for, so much that you have been doing, O God, through this devotion. And Lord, we thank you that you know, as days goes by, that you have great purpose and plan with each one of us, O oh God. We bless your name. Thank you that you heard our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Uh, I have to say a special word of thanks to all the wives of the pastors here, and of course my wife, Pastor Cynthia, and uh, uh, husbands of all the ladies who were a part of the church from early days. And Really, you know, it's, it's so beautiful to work together as homes and young and all that. Now, since this is the last episode of this sequence or this series, I'm going to request all of you uh, who have not yet subscribed to the WhatsApp. So please take a look at the screen. You have the WhatsApp number. So a lot of things keep changing based on the requirements of the government uh, for the well-being of the society. So we keep changing our times and things like that. So, <clears throat> for worship on wheels or worship on seats or worship from home. WFH actually means worship from home. You can use it for other things too, but that's the greatest use of WFH. You please subscribe to the WhatsApp by sending a text message uh, as is shown there. Just follow those instructions. Keep uh, watching the uh, Facebook, YouTube or the church website because updates are going to come. Uh, for us uh, to keep moving forward. So, love you. Thanks for giving us all the time and watching. Love you. God bless you. Welcome to WOW! Worship on Wheels at Temple of God. Please make a note of the worship timings every Sunday. For all those who are on two-wheelers, 7 o'clock in the morning. For all those who are on four-wheelers, 9 in the morning. We also have a combined worship 
for those who are on two-wheelers and four-wheelers at 6 in the evening. The new timings of worship service at Bethel AG Church, especially for those who are on public transport, is at 10.30 in the morning and 12 noon. For those who like to participate online, please do log on to our website, to our YouTube and Facebook at 10.30 in the morning. All items distributed here at church are UV treated and sanitized. For those who are coming on two-wheelers and walking into the church, kindly carry an umbrella due to unexpected weather conditions. Also, please do bring your own sanitizers. Thank you and looking forward for a great time of worshipping God together in Wow Worship. May God bless you.